Hello everybody. I thought I'd like to share some of my recent experimentation working on various coil systems and looking at efficiency and at specific properties. And here I have um, a very special coil. This coil is a mixture of alloy and non-metallic materials in a ratio of the golden mean and around this disc is a set of coils a driving coil and a controlling coil here at the moment in the first instance so the driving coil is a rotating coil a counterclockwise or a differential coil um, connecting here connected in bifilar fashion to the load and I have an additional small wire control coil um, wound as well which will show some interesting features of this coil I like to show. Let's start with magnetic properties. The coil has a magnetic core which you can see here which is running through the system in various fields and when I go through frequency range the Parkhausen effect is very audible so it's quite noisy the, the knacking the knacking noise of the coil and I can see that on the oscilloscope also as high peak ghost images so the control coil here the output goes to a variable capacitor and that will have an impact. So I will, I, I'm not driving this control coil or this additional coil with any kind of frequency. I rather let the coil itself um, do the job for me and I help along with applying the correct capacitance to harmonize the frequency. So let's have a look um, what effect is this is going to have on the output. So I'm starting up now the system. So what you can see here, what I have done is I have on channel 1 and channel 2 two current probes. The first current probe on channel 1 goes to the input side of the coil. That means where the amplifier is connected to. Channel 2 is on the output side to the load Gen 2 is currently not connected, so as a reference here, I added the mass functionality which adds channel 2 and channel 4, which is a voltage output on the output side, and channel 2 is a voltage on the input side um, running around the coil from the amplifier. I'm going up here now to 100 volt, and you would see it on the second camera, the lights will come up. You see the current here. I'm at 138 kilohertz at the moment. Let's go to 100 volt. So 158 kilovolt. It calculates at the moment 50 50 watt output. Now, if I tune that now away, okay. You see that the output is slower on the load. You see also that the output is slower on the input side. However, if I turn it a bit further, see, it drops. And now I align it, have more power on the output. But see what happens here. I drop on the load side with power dramatically but the load is very strong illuminated yes it increases the value here so we have to do the math and we have to try and to find an explanation why when the load is picking up the highest value that means that it actually consumes the energy to illuminate the bulb then the power is dropping here on the load side now let's go again let's recycle that less load you see the power increases. 
it decreased here on the input side, that's fair enough. Now I'm going up here, still no power output on the load side. Now it's increasing, it's dropping on voltage, it's dropping on current as well. You see, that's the current, it goes very low down. But the brightness is high. Current goes up, voltage goes up. So that's a very interesting phenomenon. And I have to do a lot of more um, tests to understand that. But uh, at the moment, it's a bit difficult to comprehend that. So let's walk through that again. So 130 at 100 volt. Let's say it's 14 volt. Go here. It goes to 40, 50 volt low. Now get it to highest brightness. Here we go. It goes down 6 watt. It drops dramatically for the highest brightness. So that was a short introduction of uh, what I'm up here, but there will be more to come. Thank you.